Hi, it's Fortune Buchholz again of NotFortunesFool.com. You can find me both at my website and again on Facebook at NotFortunesFool. Per request of one of my followers, I'm making another kind of coffee table video. It's been a while since I've made one, uh, so I thought it would be a good uh, opportunity to make another one and connect with you all again. I'm here uh, in my new apartment in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where my husband is doing some work, so I've come here with him. As a result, I've had the chance to begin reading Lenormand at the wonderful little boutique, Journeys of Life, in Shadyside, right off Walnut Street. It's a lovely store and I'm really happy to be able to do a lot of Lenormand there and have people respond very well to Lenormand reading. Of course, you might say that Lenormand, with its various styles, one of which is German, is very apt for Pittsburgh, a working class city, uh, a former Rust Belt city that's reinvented itself as kind of a startup capital now that it's got Google, Uber, and more than 45 startups here, particularly in the area known as Squirrel Hill. Um, all of that talent coming from Carnegie Mellon University. So uh, when there was sort of renaissance of Pittsburgh, we also see a uh, strong interest in card reading and in a variety of other modalities. So I'm very happy to have been able to um, offer that. The question that I'm going to address today is the question that uh, one of my readers asked me, uh, how I am reading Lenormand here, how my style of reading is going here in this area, and what decks that uh, my customers are really requesting and how my sitters are connecting with them. So I just thought that I'd go ahead and follow up that question, and uh, if you have any other questions or want more information, please don't hesitate to contact me or suggest other video subjects that you'd like to see here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, just plunge in. All right? So I do read in the German style. There are a variety of schools or styles in the Lenormand. And of course, to some extent, that's controversial. Some people feel that the differences are large. Some people that the differences are small, even negligible and not worth mentioning. Nonetheless, there are slightly different styles of reading Lenormand, and I am myself a German reader. And this comes from my experience largely of reading in Europe, studying in Europe, and also that's just the style that I happen to respond to uh, the most. Uh, people here in Pittsburgh also do seem to respond to that style, possibly because there's a large history of uh, German immigrants here and some aspects of a German culture. There's still a neighborhood here called Germantown. So um, there are a lot of people here with German heritage and they connect easily to the deck and to the style of reading uh, for some reason. I'm not quite sure why, but it's, a, it's an interesting fit and a nice piece of synchronicity. So I normally bring six decks with me when I am reading at the Wonderful Journeys of Life. It's such a safe and supportive space and it's very easy to read there and all my sitters feel extremely comfortable there. So I'm always happy to go there and offer a variety of decks and I usually offer everything from Robert Place's and Rachel Pollock's Burning Serpent to a traditional deck, either an Owl or the Piatnik deck, to Chiro Marchetti's Gilded Reverie deck, to the new Newer Neil Lovitz Chelsea Lenormand uh, deck, and I also like to use regular Elizabeth Feichter and Urban Troish's Mystical Lenormand, as well as the Low Scarabeo Art Nouveau Oracle. So these are uh, some of the decks uh, that I often come with, but I find that really uh, most people do not respond to the traditional Lenormand here in Pittsburgh. Most people respond uh, to the uh, Robert Place and Rachel Pollock deck. I think that's very interesting and I wanted to talk about why I thought that was. Of course, I've been um, an acquaintance of both Rachel and uh, Robert for uh, quite some time uh, on Facebook. I have in fact met them both in person at various tarot conferences, although it was quite some time ago, so they may not necessarily remember the time that uh, we met at the Reader's Studio. Um, I think it was in 2006, maybe 2007, so it was really quite some time ago and I haven't been back to the Reader's Studio in recent years. I just always seem to be in a different part of the country. Nothing against the Reader's Studio whatsoever. Journeys of Life also has a strong history uh, with Rachel. She has gone uh, to give lectures there and she did give a pre-release lecture for the deck, The Burning Serpent Oracle, uh, two or three years ago. 
So the people there feel a strong connection to this deck, and they also like to support the work of Rachel Pollock quite a bit. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the aspects of the Burning Serpent Oracle and the cards that the people I read for uh, tend to connect with the most. So here we have, of course, the famous Burning Serpent Oracle. I think everyone is familiar with this somewhat non-traditional deck. It's really a beautiful deck, and if you don't own it, uh, I love the card stock. It's of extremely high quality. It shuffles like a dream. It's very silky. It's a very durable deck. I do read with it many times a week, and as you can see, it has almost no wear or tear that's visible on it at all, even though I do let my sitters and my clients, my co-listeners, co co as I like to say, uh, shuffle the deck with me. So um, as you can see, it's extremely sturdy. It's very slick, but not overly laminated moves and uh, splays easily, easy to fan, easy to spring, very good deck. All right, so often, you know, when I talk to people who still haven't seen the Lenormand, it's still kind of new here. There are not a lot of Lenormand readers here, and not a lot of people use it uh, at home for themselves. Some of the cards and symbols uh, are unfamiliar to them, and so some of them they respond to uh, quizzically, and some they connect to immediately. So let's uh, show you an example of that in comparison uh, to say the Piatnik deck, which is a more traditional Lenormand. So here we have the Piatnik deck. This is card number 11. This is the whip or the birches. And you can see here, this shows both a bundle of birches and a whip versus Robert Place's the whip which he shows as a cat of nine tails. So what I find is that most people who are new to Lenormand, most of my uh, sitters who come to me for the first or second time, and my students, as I said, really struggle to understand this card. Um, they look at this card, of course, it's a commonplace object. If you think about uh, this deck as a Biedermeier deck, a deck from the middle of the 19th century, uh, from the south of Germany, when things like whips, birches, carpet beaters are very common objects. But today, of course, they're quite uncommon objects. So when people first see this, interestingly enough, the association that many of them make is with witchcraft or magic because they see this broom, this bundle of birch sticks. And to them, it looks like a handmade, traditional 19th century Amish broom. So they associate brooms with witches or brooms with house cleaning. They don't associate it with the whip idea, even though there is a whip hanging over it. They Maybe this is unique to Pennsylvania because of the Amish influence here, but they do definitely uh, connect to this as an Amish broom as a household object and not necessarily as a whip at all. So this is a case where the non-traditional, more modern version excuse me, let me turn this around for you, that Robert Place offers, the Cat of Nine Tails, is actually uh, a better visual connection and has more visual meaning than uh, other decks would for my current sitters because they recognize the Cat of Nine Tails as a bad thing, as a negative thing, as a form of punishment. And they also recognize it immediately as a whip, which they do not with the Piatnik deck. So I think that's very interesting. They're also, as I said, attracted to the brighter colors and the larger cards. Of course, Robert Place's art is very emotional. Um, it has a technical fluency. Uh, he's so concerned about the printing and how it prints and how the colors pop and how the gradation works that it's just easier for clients to see. It's easier for clients to understand the central image and they just connect to it much more easily. Then let's go ahead and, and show you another example of this and this is in the two woman cards. All right. Now, uh, this is a case where the card insert really dominates the traditional deck. And many of my clients really don't see the actual woman symbol or the woman significator because they're staring at the ace of spades. And many people have a negative association with the ace of spades. So they don't see this card as a significator. They see this card as bad because they have this association with the Ace of Spades. So this is just a question of a modern audience, again, uh, struggling to connect with the images of the deck. And even after you explain it to them, they struggle to get over their immediate impression and their emotional reaction and their built up associations. When they finally see the woman on the deck, they can't really connect to her. Uh, she's distant, her face is distant, she's dressed in empire clothing. Um, 
and she just doesn't they just don't relate to her even on an antique level so I'm finding that a lot of people however really respond strongly to Robert Place's uh, the woman card they like her mucha or Art Nouveau style uh, jewelry she has both a, a 20s feel and an Art Nouveau feel uh, she also has a smile. You can see her face. She seems warm and approachable. She's not blocked or dominated by the card insert or the card symbol. And people immediately recognize her as themselves or as a significator card. They can relate to her. And of course, this is so crucial when we're having a Lenormand reading. We want people to relate to the images on the cards, even though that's not the primary means we use to read Lenormand. It's still great that the sitters can immediately connect to them and feel that the re reading is relating to them and to their daily concerns. So, I mean, that's, I just think that's very interesting. Another instance that you can see this is in the paths, the ways, or chemins, if you like the French deck. So, here we have the traditional Piatnik, the ways, right? So, now this card actually has a lot of advantages, right, in that it has many roads, right? It actually uh, has five ways. So if you're looking at different options in a grand tableau, you can see that the different roads point out quite easily to a wide variety of options, which is very useful in a reading when people are seeking to get themselves out of a black and white point of view and seeking to help uh, themselves navigate through to new options or new directions, which is, of course, always our goal in a Lenormand reading or any kind of card reading, actually. So you think that this would be a really, really great card and a lot of people would respond to this. But in fact, again, they don't. They don't like the colors. And again, they're dominated. It's dominated by the image of the card insert. So as a result, where they it previously didn't recognize the uh, woman or the lady as a person card, they think of this as a person card, which of course it can be, but that's not you know, usually the primary meaning. But however, they just see this as a person card and they don't see the, the lady card as a person card. So that's a very interesting conundrum and not something that you might expect until you've been reading the Norman professionally with people who are new to the deck for a long time. Whereas if you look at Robert Place's deck, well, it doesn't offer as uh, many roads or paths, people immediately see this uh, for the, the keyword and the options that it represents. And many people, particularly at Journeys of Life, which is a metaphysical store, immediately understand that this is the Triple Goddess, this is Brigid or Hecate, and they totally get that immediately and they get the meaning of the card. So again, this is a case where Robert Place and Rachel Pollock have updated the card in a way that many non-traditionalists might not necessarily be comfortable with at first, but it's working really well with contemporary clients and they find a lot of benefit in this. Again, it not being dominated by the card insert is a big plus when we come to look at these kinds of readings where we want to consider different options. Now let's look at another card comparison that I think is really interesting and that is here as you can see the tower in the traditional deck. Now this is again a card that I think would work really well here in Pittsburgh which is a hilly town with two rivers and many many elaborate church steeples. Due to the history of Pittsburgh where we have many ethnicities coming and building beautiful and elaborate churches, Pittsburgh is dominated by these astonishing towers, church towers, bell towers, which uh, you can see in every direction and float beautifully over the many hills and um, sort of offer their, their gorgeous shadow and lovely views over the river valleys as you look between uh, the two rivers that surround Pittsburgh, right? So you think that this again would be a deck that people here in Pittsburgh would respond really well to. But in fact, they do not. Again, this is a case where the card insert distracts them. So they see this again as a spade. They have associated immediately a negative aspect with all spades. Uh, the tower is not necessarily always a negative card, but once they see the spade, they just can't get over it and they can't connect to the landscape, even though the landscape is one that they're familiar with and actually highly resembles the Pittsburgh area a lot. So here's another case where uh, the tower 
here in the Burning Serpent deck really is uh, an image that they respond to immediately, even though we're reading based mostly on keywords, combinations, pairs, near and far, right? What we see here is that people who are new to Lenormand really respond to the images and they love this image. Again, when they think of Pittsburgh, when they think of the towers on the Pittsburgh skyline, they think more of towers like this, even though what we normally see are the more elaborate towers as you find in the Piatnik deck. They just, they immediately get this, they associate all of the meanings with this and it becomes very clear to them. And it also feels very comfortable to them. So to them, to them this deck seems very Pittsburgh and this image seems more Pittsburgh to them even though this actually resembles the Pittsburgh skyline more. So then let's talk about uh, another card that I find is very interesting, again, in the context of the Pittsburgh audience and the sitters I deal with. Let's talk about the ring. All right, so in many decks, of course, you know, you have the singular object, the singular ring, uh, and usually, you know, you see the gem and you just see the ring there. It's not always the most obvious sort of ring symbolism. It's not, you know, a super large image here. Again, um, this suffers from not being a very bright image. People struggle to understand that the ring is gold. And again, it's dominated by this card insert here. Again, people have immediate negative impressions with black suits, with clubs, even though of course, this is not a negative card at all, um, but just the concept of this giant black suit uh, causes people to uh, trigger cultural associations, um, and it's hard to then re-educate them more towards the Lenormand Association. They just have this immediate negative impression. Whereas here, this card uh, causes a much different response, even though it doesn't have uh, the jewel. People do not have any problems understanding that this is a gold ring, and they immediately also uh, connect it to a wedding ring. This may be because Pittsburgh has a large Jewish community, and of course Rachel Pollock and Robert Place here have illustrated a traditional European communal Jewish wedding ring here. So many of my sitters uh, who have that background or who are familiar with that background immediately recognize this object for what this is, and uh, they get the range of meanings quite immediately. So um, as a result, I'm finding that when I offer people a range uh, of decks to choose from, they almost always choose, I'd say 60, 70, 75% of the time, they choose the Burning Serpent or Oracle and they understand it with great clarity, even though it's not a traditional deck. So um, I'm finding that the Burning Serpent Oracle, although a non-traditional deck, as I've said before, is actually the one that teaches the most Lenormand and communicates the spirit, the traditional spirit of the Lenormand in terms of its traditional meanings more clearly and more readily to my client base here in Pittsburgh. I just thought that was um, interesting and I hope that answers the question uh, that my uh, reader asked. And so I, um, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And again, don't hesitate to follow me uh, on my Facebook page, Not Fortune's Fool, or go look at my website, notfortunesful.com. And I hope that if you're in the Pittsburgh area, I'll see you soon at Journeys of Life. I'm reading most weekends, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Of course, I'm always available also for private appointments. So you have a great day and keep those questions coming. Thanks.